good evening. It is August 1, and I don't know how it happened. We're uh, here. Actually, it's 31st. <laughs> August 1 is Sabbath. It so is tomorrow. It's, it's, oh. <laughs> you're dead. <ahead. laughs> I'm, I'm already. <laughs> you know, I, I missed you last week, by the way, though. Yeah, so that kind of threw us off, probably. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know when. It is 2020 still, the longest year in my ever memory. It is true. Yeah. <laughs> so this year is never is ending. Oh. So, anyway, it's Friday night, um, and we are here with you again. We, we uh, thought about and tried to come up with what would be... The Bible doesn't go out of date. We, we covered that yes. weeks ago. Mm -hmm. But what are some stories that we can go through that God has already put there that we can draw on for encouragement and hope? And then maybe share a little bit of that with you. That's kind of what we're going through. So we have five stories from the Old Testament that have um, a couple of them maybe ones that you've heard a lot. And a couple of them maybe ones that you didn't know about. But in that story is something that we're going to try to bring to life that I think... Especially in the unsettled times right, here, exactly. Uh, not just in at NBA, but in California, in America, it's like left hand, right hand, not knowing what's going on sure. and what's going. On. So we're hoping that that's what comes true. All right, and with that, because that's sort of the prologue for the month, let's start with our first story. Is going to be the story of Joseph. Joseph, this faithful guy, yeah. right? And so in Genesis 50, if you have your Bible, start getting it out. Uh, you're going to be in Genesis 50. And Joseph is the next to youngest, I guess that's how you would say yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah. He's the oldest of Jacob's favorite wife. Yes, yeah, right, right, Rachel. Right? So which yeah. is why he gets a double portion out yeah. of all the brothers. He gets a double portion because he's the, he's the true birthright heir. Well, I, and during this whole um, shelter in place, right. the, the, you know, COVID-19, it's been funny, if you've watched those places, families, how they've dealt with this. Yeah. And the dynamics have come out. Yeah. This story has family dynamics. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> this, 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 this is, uh, Jacob and his family is like the model for, for dysfunctional families and trying to survive conflict and who's got what. Oh, and, oh my goodness. It, it's, it's a fascinating read, you know, just any anywhere from Genesis uh, about 22 on is right. yeah. phenomenal. This story is amazing. So we're just going to highlight some things, and we're not going to go through it. But if you have some time to read through this story and just the ins and outs, uh, let's start. Um, so I want to start with the end, if you okay. don't mind. So if you would read for us Genesis 50, verse 19. Genesis What's 50, verse 19. Yep. I'm reading from the NIV tonight, and, and largely that's because I forgot my Bible. Uh, and we'll see how it goes, uh, and because uh, for, for some, the, the King James has been uh, a, a bit of a stumbling block for them. I'm comfortable with it, but you know, I'm trying to make it more, a little more easy for other people. It's just what I grew up with. But So it's going to be NIV, and maybe NIV for the month. So we'll see how it goes. 15, 9, 15 19, right? Yep, 15, 19. Okay, mm -hmm. NIV. But Joseph said to them, and he's talking to his brothers, Correct. Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me. I'm going on to verse 20. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, yes, keep going. I'm sorry, yeah, 1920. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Now, in many respects, what, we're, what we've been experiencing, you kind of think, well, what is for good? Because we see the lament and, and yeah. we see the struggle. Now, for those, uh, just to catch up on this story, um, as, as, as Deg said earlier, that um, Joseph is the second to the youngest yeah. uh, of Jacob, um, and then he's the oldest with his wife, Rachel, mm -hmm. and uh, with Jacob and Rachel. But, so he gets double portion, he gets a nice cloak made for him, that um, he is sent out to see his brothers who are gone away, bring back from port, the brothers see him coming. Here comes that dreamer. Dreamer, right, right. Why did Why did you give him that nickname? You know, it is it is one of the interesting stories because what I find interesting a little bit, Jacob. <laughs> he still not telling us his name, by the way. So so Joseph is called a dreamer because he consistently has dreams throughout his life, and and then he tells them, and uh, he probably has an idea of the interpretation, but he has such a relationship with with God. 
But he consistently gets dreams and interprets visions. And the reason, other than Daniel, there's nobody else in like scripture like that. Nobody. Joseph and Daniel are it. And um, the reason it is fascinating to me is because Joseph has the dream, and you know Jacob's been playing favors with him, right? And so you would think, oh, this is a sign. This this is I I made I was right. This is my special child, right? Correct. Uh, mm-hmm. This is my I'm double portion, special jacket, da 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 da. But the story records that his first one he tells of, and this is before his young his younger brother Benjamin is born. He tells the story of. The, of these stars and this, or, or, sorry, the sorry the different wheat and the wheat things bowing down and two larger ones and he tells his dad uh, that when he tells him there's another one he has about sun and moon and the stars bowing down to, to him and his dad gets totally insane like what are you talking you think your mother and I are going right. to bow down to you right which is interesting enough for mother never does because she's dead by that time right. but it's interesting because you know, I wonder, I, I always, I mean, that whole story is like, what part of him did he not go away? This is God speaking, God. Because he. this is a guy who had already earlier Jacob. dreamed about, yeah. uh, well, this is the house of God. God had said, you, you follow this path, I'll take care of you, but his head not. So he knew. He wrestled with God. He wrestled with God, yeah. he had had that face-to-face encounter, and now he has seen that, that spiritual lineage passed down. And from what we can tell, he's the only boy who has anything like that. Mm-hmm. And the one girl, because Jacob has at that point uh, 12 children, 11 boys and uh, one girl. Mm-hmm. But this is the only one that seemed to have this connection. And that just sets Jacob off. And he may call in the dream, or lets it slide, because the boys are like, oh, we'll never, da 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 You know, he's called mm-hmm. the dreamer, so he right. has these dreams. But it does pay back later when he's in captivity. Correct. And his dreamer uh, status stays with him his entire life. Yes, yeah. I mean, he has more and more dreams. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and other people have dreams, and he interprets the dreams. That's what gets him out by the Correct. Parents, right? So, a couple points is they sold him to, to, to slavery. He goes to, to his the, cousins, the Ishmaelites. To, <laughs> boy, I didn't even... That's right. Yeah. To his cousins. Yeah. So that's how... I'm sure that's how they recognize him. Say, hey, cuz. Wow. I hadn't even thought of that before. Well, this, so they took him off his hands. So they sold... Their brother to their cousins, and their cousins sold him to, into slavery to the Egyptians. Yep. So when he gets he gets purchased, goes to the captain of the guard, his home Potiphar. Um, then it's successful. And w- one of the things that if you've been going through what we've been going through here with the pandemic, yes, up and down, and that's what Joseph experienced. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Hey. He is accused by Potiphar's wife of being um, inappropriate, and it goes down. And then he goes into prison and again put in a place of elevated. authority. Yeah. He's elevated up again. And then two people from Pharaoh's court come and he tells them their dreams. And he oh, says, yeah. Can you remember me? Oh, yeah, I remember you. Everything's looking good again. And then he nothing goes, happens. So, right, nothing happens. And then he's finally remembered and he comes to Pharaoh's court and he reveals what's going to happen right. in the future. That, in fact, there's going to be a, a, a famine. Yeah, and Pharaoh has two dreams. Yeah. One of the corn and one of the cows. And he says, okay, the sun says, and Pharaoh goes, dude, you're the person. Yeah. So we need somebody in charge, and he's elevated once again. And then the famine strikes, which could be, but he's in a place now where he is, he is struggling. But he sees his family struggling, and they come back to see him. Yeah. And I guess one of the things about this is that, it, I want to read that line again that you read at the very end. Because I think we forget this sometimes, especially, mm. you know, sometimes around the blacks, the white space around the black letters, Doug, I wonder about, do we actually see or internalize or understand the heartache, mm. the, the, the scars, as it were, the painful moments? And I, and I think, folks, for you out there, uh, just like us, we have those scars. We have those things. We've gone through those moments. And up, up and down, we wonder, is there any relief? Yeah. Is there any Can free? God hear me? You're right. All of this stuff is going on, and maybe you feel like your prayers go to the ceiling. It, that passage almost sounds like that, right? It's like, we're, I'm, I'm, I pray to get out of the prison, or I, I pray to be delivered, I pray for this, and I get stuck in prison. I pray to get out of the prison, and nothing happens. I pray to finally get out, okay, that, and everything is just snowballing. It's never going, and he's, you know, you, I would have thought, okay, God, what's the deal? Right, right. But what he ends up saying is, you meant this, yeah. and the same thing that you meant. That this, he's not saying, oh, you did bad and, and God made it good. He's saying, what you thought was, this is what God used Correct. to turn good, to save people. 
And so that line again goes into, at the very end there, it says, in verse 20, you intend to harm me, but God intended good for good. To accomplish what is being done, the saving of many lives. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that, just, just my own wondering sometimes is that we're going through things, but I don't know what good God's going to bring us. Right. And, and we want that answer now. Well, yeah, it's true. We, you know, and it's hard to accept that the journey we're in is the journey. Yes. It's like, I, I don't want to know where it's going to end up. God, God's like, left foot, right foot, left foot. Right. Right foot. And then, yeah, yeah, God, I got that. But where are we going to end up? Left foot, right <laughs> foot. foot. Left. Be faithful every day. And that's your, that's all you need to know. And it sounds, it, and again, for especially for somebody who's a bit of a control freak or likes to know plans, right? Right, right. You know, I, I like to have things all sketched <laughs> sure, out. Absolutely. And, and and it's like, oh, 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 oh. We're, we're gonna have okay. So the, the yeah. semester's gonna be this way. Oh no. Oh, we're gonna have it. Uh, 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 Anxiety. And, and, it's and up and down. Yep. God's like, yeah, that's that's what I can I can promise you one thing that I will never leave you. I'm not gonna actually tell you how it's gonna go along the way. There's a missionary, her name was Ellen Helen Rose Veer, and uh, she quoted this one time after having a horrible experience. She said that she felt like God was talking to her and says, Can you trust me with this experience, even if I never tell you why? You know, and what I, what I think is interesting about Joseph's life is that how many times during those those Egyptian years did he have any kind of, even after he's doing good, right. he has a wife and a family, he yeah. has wealth, yeah. he has prestige. Yeah. Did he kind of think, you got servants, he has right. tenants, every. But did he go back and say, God, I still don't know what you're doing. Right. Because there's a hole in his, and there is, there's relationships, that there's this, still this black hole that yeah. he can't repair yet. Yeah. And he repairs it in the idea that God has a reason for something. I'm just astounded by that. Yeah. Maybe part of the, the hope out of this story, I think, is right? Because God's foresight. We, we don't know. Uh, what, what's the issue with, with, with COVID virus or the financial markets or job security or, or moving or friends or where we're standing on and on and on. And we want to know, okay, God, so I'm all, I can go through this. If God, if you tell me how it's going to end up, yes. God's like, that's not how it works. And yeah. that is very unsettling. And God's foresight will only become our hindsight. Once we've gone through, is what the Bible promises. And that may not be, you know, comforting to a certain extent. But every single story we're going to go through, you're going to see God's like, but I got you. I got you. It's hard. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to sugarcoat this at all. It's, it's not easy. But God's like, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm. But I'm not telling you where we're ending up. I love that line. God's foresight is our hindsight. Yeah. That's, that's powerful. Yeah. It's the way we figure out, oh, that was God leading kind of there. So, hopefully as you kind of think about and mull through the story, maybe you see, maybe you don't know the story. Take the time to read it. Joseph's life, if we think that our one year in 2020 has been bad... Whoo, he had decades yeah. of up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And, and he did nothing wrong through the whole thing. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, he did everything right. right. <laughs> he wore his mask. Yeah. He, you know, he sheltered in place. He did all the kind of things. That's and right. still, it was like, and you get wrongly accused, and you're in jail, yeah. and you're sold by your brothers to your cousins who sell you again. It's like... Yeah. Where does it end? And you, you may be at that point, and okay, God, I get it, enough. And God's like, well, we still need to walk a little more. Left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. Well, we thank you for watching with us. Thank you so much. If you want to read the story, have some time to read the story. Chapter 37 of Genesis, it starts it off, and so you can read more of this kind of the whole journey all the way to chapter 50. But we're glad to be back with you. Yeah. Uh, we did miss you last week, and, uh, and we'll see you again next week. Until another moment in time. Keep looking up. See Bye. You. Bye.